<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. It's a beautiful day, and Jan, why'd you take your coat off? Because it got warm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of cold when we came out, but now that we're hiking up this hill and in the woods, it's uh, and the sun's coming down. It's kind of like that uh, fable of getting the old man to take his coat off. Yep, and the wind's not blowing. Right. We're, Jan and I just taking a, a nice morning walk up through our timber. This is uh, some of the Judy timber. It's about 30 acres in here of uh, primarily white oak. It's definitely the dominant species. There's a few black oaks and an occasional red oak. But you can see there's some really nice, well, there's a nice one there. Um, we're kind of eyeballing, just kind of taking an inventory of some trees that uh, we can we'd like to put on our sawmill this year. So these will be some trees that we take down. They're the, they're the right size. I mean, if you let a white oak get much bigger than this one in Missouri, you're, you're gonna have a dead spot in the very middle. And then it starts rotting and then they just fall over. You don't get any economic value from them at all. This is a beaut right here. It's a, Heck, it's 16 foot to that limb. Good girl. You're gonna get uh, one, two, probably at least four eight footers out of that. Or you could get a 12 and several eights. But I mean, it's. Jim, why don't you put your arms around that tree? Gives you a good reference how big that thing is. You touch your hand. You can't. I'm a tree hugger. <laughs> yeah, you got your yeah. So you're about 18 inches from touching there. Um, that's going to be a really nice log. I did get a uh -oh. a bigger saw. I've got one now. It's got a, a 25 inch blade on it. it it's a logging saw. I mean, it'll it'll eat that. If you tackle one like that and you don't have enough saw, there's a good chance you'll ruin it. Because when it goes to fall over and you don't have it cut in two, it's going to split. Oh yeah, there's another one. There's several in here. Yeah. Man, that is a beautiful one. There's another one. This is actually, uh, we haven't cut any trees out of here since, uh, this is 2022. We were just reminiscing. Last time we had a logger in here was... 2004. No, two, you said. Somewhere in there, two or four. Yeah. Well, it was the same year we had docks logged. So I think that was four. As you can see, there uh, there's a lot of trees in here, and a lot of them are getting to that market size. You don't want to go in here and clear cut it, but. If you'll selectively harvest the ones that are ready, well, then it releases, you know, these smaller ones like that, and that tree can take off. Um, there's an old logging road up here. I'm getting close to it. This is one of my favorite places to deer hunt. I've got a deer stand right down this ridge. <clears throat> Usually is good for harvesting venison every deer season you can see why deer like it in here i mean there's just tons and tons of of browse little bitty trees and you get the little bitty trees and you open up the canopy by taking out some big ones so if we come in here and cut let's say 50 60 of these trees this summer spring whenever we do cut them you're going to have an explosion of this stuff this, these smaller trees I'm walk on down this logging road this way, honey. Make sure you're... Rucker? That's Isaac's puppy. He just dropped the ball. Okay, okay. He's got he's got his mind on something else. He's probably smelling a possum. The ball doesn't smell so good anymore. I'm no. a possum. Put it away. He is really grown. He can almost keep up with the big dogs now. Boy, here's... 
We cut this back in, uh, oh gosh, it's been 22, yeah, around 23, 24 years ago. Um, we took a pretty darn good cutting out of here. And we, we took trees that were like that. Well, this one wasn't that big at that time. It reflected more the size of that one, you know, that one over there. But boy, when you give them a little space, man, do they take off. And down here is a lot of smaller trees. So it's gonna take a while to get any, there's, there's some decent ones down in there, but nothing ready to harvest. You can see the old logging over here. See the dips in it there? Uh, this has been in here ever since my Uncle Scott bought this farm back in the late 50s, early 60s, 1960. And uh, probably some of this logging road was made with horses when they used to pull the logs out with teams. But if you go back into timber around here, especially up on ridges like this, you're going to find an an indention like this where they pulled a lot of trees out and of course when they pulled the trees out they moved a lot of dirt and there is some nice trees in here yep. go back this way just hadn't been over on this end of the paddock or this end of the, the woods paddock for a long time We did let, uh, when uh, we had a couple here raising hogs, they would, they had wires in here, the poly, poly braid. And they fenced these woods off and they had about 25, 30 harvest. They were, oh gosh, they were close to 300 pounds, Brookshire's Red Wattle Cross. And uh, put them in here in the fall in pretty good sized paddocks, like probably two to three acres. And then they just kept rotating them. And for water, we used the water up at the house. Uh, we had a big, long polyethylene pipe that we crossed the creek with. So it basically had like three water points along the base of this woods. Those hogs really did a number in here. <clears throat> the one thing that and they did well, but on the other end of the spectrum, they also ate all the acorns. Of course, that's what a hog's going to do. They ate all the, and that's why they put them in here. But in hindsight, it really put a hammer on the deer and the turkeys. Well, and squirrels too, that's their natural food. And the hogs gleaned up every single acorn in here. Well, then you didn't have any food in the winter time for the uh, wildlife so you know acorn pigs are fine if you you know there is a trade-off though you're not going to have any food for the wildlife so it's, there's no free lunches out here it's either one gets it or the other one gets it man this is just beautiful in here when you get up in here you can't see any houses you can't hear anything. It's just like you're back in Daniel Boone days, you know. Smokey, what do you think about <laughs> the old dog? Yeah, we're gonna have some pretty nice logs in here to get out. We just gotta come in here and mark them and probably take a can of spray paint and just spray the ones. Now there's there's a tree you don't want to cut. If you cut it, you want to make it into firewood. It's an old deer stand, look at that. And it's got spikes in it. And I am the uh, architect of that. I did that when I was probably 13 years old. <laughs> so that's been in there Golly, almost 50 years. 
So that's one, if you ever cut it, you'd want to make firewood out of it and make darn sure when you cut it into chunks, boy, you wouldn't want to hit that with chainsaw. That'd leave a, a mark on your blade for sure. Oh, here's the here's the deer stand up here. You can't even see it. It blends in with the wood so well. You see, the deer are used to it. So you can sneak up here on this logging road in the dark and climb up in that stand right there. It's got a swivel seat. I don't even have any camouflage on it. I just bring a cushion. It's got a steel seat on it. And anyway, that seat swivels. It's in a really, it's been there for, gosh, at least 10 years. Kind of got it up against that tree there where it, but it seems like the deer always come from the north and they come down that ridge right here. I've had them come right up behind me here too. Amazing how quietly they can walk. You'd think in these leaves, you'd hear them coming, but sometimes you don't. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up with that and uh, everyone have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll see you down the road next time and be safe out there and uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out if you would. Thank you, take care.